Okay. So that means uh, Naraji is telling us that we should pursue our life uh, in the field uh, where we are, the station of life. Uh, we just keep on uh, doing our duties. Only thing we need to abandon is uh, the attachment to the fruits. See, because we are at a place because of our uh, old sanskaras. And we need to exhaust our vasanas. And we can extinguish the vasanas only by doing our duties. We got to learn the skillfulness of doing our duties and letting go of the fruits of our actions. Joys and sorrows, they are part of life. They come, they go. But a true devotee never allows his mind to worry over them. But the Bhagat who has already surrendered himself and all his profits, losses, successes, failures, in other words, everything unto him, anxiety cannot be there. Because if we look at anxiety is always, if we are doing anything for ourselves. If you are doing it for God, what is that anxiety? God is the one who is the bestower of the fruits also. It's his decision. It's for him anyway. So, bottom line is, he says, do not uh, abandon your worldly duties. In fact, uh, whatever you are doing, put your 100% into it. Uh, any activity, but only the attitude is different. That's how we transform any action. Because when we are constantly thinking about God, when we surrender our fruits to him, when we, surrender, when we don't have any anxiety towards the outcome of any action, all work, no matter what work we are doing, it becomes a worship to him. All actions. It's not only certain actions, it's not only sitting in the temple area or going to the temple. It could be cleaning your own bathroom, cooking, whatever you are doing, even feeding yourself, constantly keep your mind attached to that highest. That's how it becomes worship of him. So with the change in the inner attitude, the devotee's daily sadhana deepens. The love for God broadens. It just expands so much that you will really have the spiritual experiences. You will find greater pleasure in daily job. It's not mechanical anymore. You will enjoy meeting people, not meeting people, doing this, doing that, because you're connected with him. So true devotee goes through the muddy pools of sansar, constantly remembering him but waiting eagerly for the day when he will leave this place and be at his feet eternally. What we need to do is detect our ego because our ego is the one which doesn't let us surrender completely to God. Detect the ego whenever it's rising. Then make an effort to surrender it to, to Lord. How? By renouncing the anxieties of the fruits of your actions. Sincerely from your heart, with a serene mind and a complete dedication. That's what Naraji has been telling us. Because a man of realization, when he works in the world, will work like this. We have seen many saints, 
many gurus we read about them or if you had the opportunity to be in their company this is how they act but we definitely read about them so the life itself of such a selfless seeker becomes a life of sadhana because sometimes people say why when you are already realize you need to do sadhana but narad ji is saying no you got to keep on doing it and one reason is this kind of a self realized person becomes a role model for others others who follow him because people like us we cannot see the inner connection of this person's heart with the god but we can definitely see the actions so we emulate them so for that reason alone he just keeps on doing his sadhana he is very noble in his behavior he dedicates everything to him so people may not understand the deep implication of the scriptures because scriptures say that but people like us can watch a person's life an average person likes to have a role model so this is a role model for us the gurus so life of perfection of the teacher conveys to all the dynamism and that's what lord krishna said in bhagavad gita yogaha karma su kaushalam that yogi does the work skillfully all the activities and this is the purpose of life god realization that is our goal god realization until you get perfection in that you do not give up your material duties or even once you get it still you do not give that up but very neutral towards everything it's almost like a kabir ji said in this couplet this is like a, a attitude of a realized person kabira khada bazar mein sab ki mange khair na ka ho so dosti na ka ho so vair is a very neutral so he says i'm not friends with anybody and i'm not enemy with anybody just neutral it's almost like a mother who lost her child in a fear from a distance she sees another boy about the same age same height she runs towards him beta beta but when she comes close she realizes this is not my son what does she do at that point she doesn't pick him up at the same time she doesn't rebuke him either how come you are not my son neutral attitude so when we understand that world is not ours we become detached this is a real vairagya it's not a shamshan vairagya that this is no good i don't want it this is a real vairagya in the real sense that we know that world is not ours we come here just for a short span of time to exhaust our vasanas and these rishis are teaching us beautifully how to exhaust your vasanas by doing your duty without having any anxiety about the outcome keep your mind attached to god neither we fight here nor search for happiness here happiness now not in the material world over here we are supposed to do our responsibilities our duties only that kind of a vairagya in bhagavad gita lord krishna talks about vairagya can be tamasik also rajasik also satvik also this is the vairagya we need to cultivate work on the detachment from the world and get attached to god completely dedicate to god don't run away from the duties this is like a internal shift we need to make and this is the kind of a detachment we need to practice so now let's look at a continuation of this thought all the way up to verse 66 so now let's look at 63 istri dhan nastik vairi charitram na shravya shraviyam 
स्त्री इज द वेमेन धन मीन्स वेल्थ नास्तिक मीन्स एथियस्ट वेरी मीन्स एनिमीज ओके चरित्रम डिस्क्रिप्शन सो द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ विमेन वेल्थ एथियस्ट एंड एनिमीज न मीन्स नॉट श्रवनीयम should be listened to so that means not listen to no shravaniyam seekers should not a devotee should not listen to descriptions of women wealth atheists and enemies so again he is giving us guidelines how to live a life and when he says istri over here that really means lust because man has written this so they said istri so it's any kind of a lustful talk and when he talks about dhan that means the greed atheist means who says i don't believe in god i don't believe in the higher power don't listen to that move away close your ears and last one he said very very means enemy enemy really means who is going to take you away from this path it could be somebody who's gossiping anybody who has those six enemies predominantly in them kaam krodh lobh moh ahankar matsarya that's a very got to choose our company properly sadhak is very careful about it okay so to reach the glorious stage of bhakti we need to learn how to do this mastery on this path because this is a sadhana we need to do so that's why he is giving us more indications over here so that we don't dissipate our energy we don't lose our precious life while living in the world many thing will reach us we are social beings people come they talk especially these days we don't even have to go just a little device of ours brings lot of information to us but we got to be very vigilant what to watch what not to watch time is very precious so he is advising us that guard your mind from all serious pollutants these are the pollutants when we get involved with our feelings we fall a victim to the sense objects so he says let the mind stand as a witness of the objects around but do not get involved in them see danger is always when it's it's like a lurking danger we got to be very careful from all of these lust greed atheism and hate because what happens on one hand we we are doing the meditations we are doing the sadhana and if you don't watch rest of the time where the mind is going during our meditations during our sadhana what are we doing in we are sitting body is sitting but the mind is roaming in these thoughts who said what who did what so that's why narad ji is saying very carefully avoid discussions with those also who say i don't believe because they will pers- persuade you you will start suspecting your own spiritual efforts you will start having doubts also because sometimes some people are very clever about it because they believe in it so they are going to make an effort they'll make an argument why are you wasting time studying these things why are you following your guru what what have you got in the material world so that's how doubts they become very strong in our mind so we got to learn how to remain like a lotus leaf in water unwetted by the water cannot run away from here 
but protect yourself. Recognize the enemies. Just like we recognize the enemies at the physical level, what to eat, what not to eat, where to go, how to wash our hands. All those things we do, these are the enemies for our mind, for our sadhana. Because there are two worlds we live in, outer world and inner world. These are the enemies of the inner world actually. Because outer world which God made for us has five elements in it. It's made out of this prakriti. And we are very smart about it. We know what to do, what not to do now. But the inner world, which has all these enemies, Kam, Krodh, Lo, Mo, Ankar, Matsarye, that's what we need to be careful about. So problem is with the inner world. And we need to finish the inner world. So Naraji is saying, be careful about it. So outside also from the outer world, whatever is coming, put a shield on it. Because if you have just started on the path of bhakti, there could be a, just a little small sapling of that bhakti. Need to protect it. Otherwise, the little sapling can be destroyed very easily. Got to be careful. So he is, has given us a word of caution. Do your duty in the outer world, but do not associate unnecessarily. Do not relish in this material topics. Be careful. Because often we get, say, Narajin, you know, we get very interested in the material topics. Somebody starts talking about someone. We want to hear. And especially if it's a negative, we get more engrossed. That's what the gossip is. So be careful. If you want to increase the heat of your sadhana, the love for God. What else we need to do? Because we are all, we are not there, but we want to be there. So he's telling us what to do. So first he told us, keep on doing your duties. But while doing the duties, do not get anxious about the fruits. Think that you are doing it for God. Then he said, do not get involved unnecessarily into all these worldly things. Try to stay away as much as you can. Especially in the third stage in life, we should definitely... Most of our family duties we have done in the third stage, one prasthashram. And majority of the people in our classes are in the third stage in life. What is their need to do the gossip? If you need to talk to somebody, talk about bhakti. Talk about seva. There are so many spiritual topics to talk about. Why talk about material topics? Otherwise, you'll be bringing the heat of your sadhana down. You're leaking your energy. Even if you want to watch something, watch something which is pertaining to spirituality. But don't watch anything. What is the need to watch? Do your sadhana. We don't have that much time to do our sadhana. Intensify your sadhana now. So that very easily from the third stage, we can move towards the fourth stage, the sannyasa ashram. Then it becomes so natural for us to sit and just stay connected with God. And if we live a life like that more and more, one day we all have to leave this human body. Lord Krishna gave us the promise. Whatever you are thinking, the last thoughts of yours determines where you will go. So make a habit of just thinking about God only. Why worry about others? You are done with your duties. Get even the kids out of your mind. The children, your body. 
all of this is none of our business anymore sadhana that's it so now he says in number 64 abhiman dambh adikam tyachyam abhiman means pride dambh means vanity adikam otherwise is tyajyam should be given up pride vanity and such other negative urges of the mind should be given up so naraj is continuing with the methods of practice how can love be cultivated and developed how can we grow in our devotion and that's what he is telling us give up cast aside all pride that i am a sadhak now no pride about that either no vanity no hypocrisy and no jealousy when he says adi adi means lot of other negative friends of these so negative urges what do they do they shrivel our personality the choke definitely our spiritual growth on one hand if we are just doing the sadhana on the other hand we become proud about it we have gone even below where we started similar idea was given in bhagavad gita you can open your book after the class check it out chapter 13 kshetra kshetra ke vibhag yog verse number 8 very clearly lord krishna is saying the same thing humility unpretentiousness non injury forgiveness uprightness service to the teacher purity steadfastness self control so he is giving us what we need to cultivate the positive naraj is telling us what we should abandon so same message they are giving you got to look at it look deeper into it when you do something like this digging into the scriptures which have been written by great rishis where is the time where is the time to do anything which he talked about in the previous verses lust and the greed and the anger and all that no keep on doing this so in a very positive language lord krishna is telling us what to do and naraj is telling us opposite of that that do not do this do not have a pride do not have a vanity do not have jealousy because they are the enemy for a sadhak pride arrogance self esteem like a self importance these are miserable passions of our ego and they must be renounced these are the negative mental habits they bring the untold agitations which will dissipate our personality in hindi abhiman when we talk about abhiman when we were little what did they say to us our parents abhimani ka sar neecha that means that you start to go downward if you become abhimani so that means pride blocks the grace of god grace of god is that we go up pride takes us down it separates us from god that's why kabir ji said jab main tha main means pride abhiman jab main tha tab hari nahi ab hari hai main nahi may is gone <laughs> see how beautifully with a simple language kabir ji is telling us jab mai tha tab hari nahi ab hari hai main nahi prem gali ati sankri ya me dwe na samaye it can be only one there it is so narrow if mai is there god is not there so we have to let go of this mai ego the ambhav notion of me and mine we got to let it go because this pride is blocking the grace of god 
just become simple that's what he says become simple humble see that's why having a guru in our life is so important we say that guru knows lot more than i do when we bend our head bow down to a guru we say guru you are everything if a guru doesn't have the ego how can we have the ego guru in a human form we look at it guru eats like us talks like us but no ego in a guru that's one of the things we see saral swabhav in every guru sat guru that's what we see saral swabhav na man kutlai those are the qualities of a guru there's no cunningness gurus don't like to they, they are not going out of their way to impress us because they are connected with god that's how we get impressed but we watch how do they sit how do they talk how do they walk how do they dress they live in this world we just look at that simplicity so god is not impressed with the pride with the abhiman god is impressed with the humility got to learn how to trust god nirmal man jan so mohi pawa nirmal man mohe chhat kapat charitra na bhava because whenever there is a abhiman there is a chhal also there is a kapat also but when there is no abhiman it's a simple personality there are so many stories in every religion all those books are filled with this how a simple personality god just came that dhanna jat such a simple Hundred percent, totally trusted that little stone. That this is Ganesha. This is Lord. He said, "I'm not going to eat unless you eat." Okay, if you don't want to eat, half half, you take mine also. That kind of a simplicity. It doesn't take long for God to come. God is everywhere, but normally we just think that, "Hey, I have done so much sadhana." i have given so much charity i have done so and so i belong to certain family so that kind of abhiman keeps god away from us so narad ji is saying to attain god we have to reject hypocrisy and become simple okay this is the bottom line tad arpit akhil acharah सन काम क्रोध अभिमान आदिकम तस्मिन एव करनी ही तत अर्पित अखिल आचारा वन हु हैज डेडिकेटेड ऑल एक्टिविटीज टू हिम अखिल मींस ऑल द एक्टिविटीज आचार मींस एक्टिविटी ओके सो अर्पित अर्पित मींस सरेंडरिंग सो वन हु हैज डेडिकेटेड ऑल एक्टिविटीज टू हिम sad means being calm desire krodh anger abhiman pride adikam etc tasmin to him ev means alone karni means should be done or should be employed having dedicated all activities unto him one should turn all his desire anger pride etc towards him alone very important words to understand so having renounced our unworthy qualities which he has mentioned earlier how do we continue to grow in a steady cultivation of bhakti so narad ji is saying all conduct in life must be dedicated to him so that means remember him first then each thought every word all our actions just do for him alone 
let your life be god oriented instead of egocentric oriented or ego oriented but right now if you look at it this kaam krodh lobh mo ahankar matsarya if we think that we can let it go these are from the mind if you don't have a mind how we going to function because mind is made up of all these so sure outcome of the actions of fruits we can surrender but how can we do these kaam krodh abhiman adikam tasmin ek karma six classifications how to renounce and yet act because we all know that no one can remain for a moment without these six all our thoughts are impelled by these six categories if all these six are removed there's no mind it's like a thoughtless mind and if there's a mind is removed there's no bhakti also because how are we going to do the bhakti bhakti is through the mind too so this is a bhakti sadhana the practice of devotion and how do we practice devotion through the mind it is only when the sadhak is on the self control path of self control he can even think of it or come to comprehend this difficulty actually otherwise people don't even pay much attention to it so that's why this teacher is advising us these six none can avoid when they are there the mind is agitated the agitated mind knows no spirituality so you must first quieten the mind quieter the mind greater the spiritual experience in order to quieten the mind you must remove this so he is telling us that all these are turned toward the world of objects right now all the feelings are towards the world that's why the mind feels dissipated turn these six towards god all six okay kaam also krodh also lobh also mat also and that's how when you turn it towards god this this turning this process of turning is called tran- transmutation of the lower urges instead of uh, all these are going towards the world turn them towards god this is how the sublimation of the ego happens let's look at the calm first desire that's a nature nature of jeevatma otherwise this atma wouldn't have gone down to the jeevatma level if there was no desire so god has created this jeevatma with intense desire for happiness that's why a little bug or even a devta divine being we are all looking for happiness this desire for happiness is there so now we have to turn this towards god how instead of looking for happiness in the worldly pursuits find happiness in godly pursuits happiness we want that's a desire for happiness you don't have to kill your desires because there are philosophies which say that there's a misery in the world that misery has a cause cause of the misery is desire and give up desire vedic teaching is not like that 
So whole focus is uh, turning the desire towards God. Right now there's a material desire, you develop a spiritual desire. So mind is there, mind wants spirituality. So that kind of a desire is not an enemy. That is a friend. This kind of a desire will liberate you from this world. This is what saints do. They develop the intense yearning for God. And the extent of the desire you and I can't even think of. Shabri had that desire for years and years. She was a young girl. When she started, she went into that ashram. And the Guru said that Ram will come. All her life, she waited for Ram. That is a desire. Waited for Ram. What happened? Ram came. And we know what happened after that. So this is the Vedas tell us. So spirituality is about attaching yourself to God. And how about anger? Well, all those, anger also, greed also, pride also, they can all turn towards God. Because when they are turned towards God, they are all pure then. They will purify you. There is a saying, Ya anuragi chit ki kati samje nahi koe. Jo jo dube sham rang, tyo tyo ujwal hoe. Anurag, anurag is the attachment. When, when you're attaching your mind to God, tyo tyo ujwal hoe. The purification happens from there. More you desire for God the more this desire will increase, more your heart will get pure. Anger. Anger is definitely a terrible defect. But you turn your anger towards God in a spiritual way. Devotee says, Haragunandan pran prite tum bin jiye bahudin rite. Angry towards ourselves that how come I can live without God? Hey, my mind, why, how come you are not detaching from the world? This kind of anger is an asset. Getting angry at yourself. How come I'm not getting up in the morning and doing my sadhana? How come I'm not doing seva? Everybody else is doing it. I cannot. Why I'm so lazy? Why I'm so self-centered? Getting angry at yourself instead of somebody else on this path. So that anger becomes an asset, not a liability. Greed, the same way. Instead of being greedy for the worldly things, worldly accomplishment, be greedy in spirituality. Devotee says, Sita Ram Charan Rati More Anudin Bad Anugrah Tore. I just want your feet only, more and more. I want your anugraha, your kripa. How come I don't get the kripa like that? So use that on this path. Always be greedy for the love of God. Be greedy that I want to do more seva. That kind of a greed is good. And pride Abhiman. Hanumanji had that Abhiman. 
हनुमान जी सेठ अस अभिमान जाए जने मोरे मैं सेवक रघुपति पति मोरे दैट कैन ऑफ अभिमान इज गुड when your head goes up i am a disciple of such and such guru then there's a responsibility also because of my actions because of my behavior i don't want somebody to say that this guru's shishya is acting like this then responsibility is there too so that abhiman is a healthy pride that pride will liberate us pride in the worldly sense sure it will drown us lord is my master i am so proud we should be proud that we belong to such kind of a culture the vedic culture which joins everybody we should be proud of it we should be proud to say i am a hindu that will uplift us i am so proud that my beloved is that and i am a servant of such a master i'm proud of it so be proud about him and be proud to be his servant this pride becomes the biggest asset on the path of devotion so this way you can turn everything towards god and i'll end the class with the story from sant tulsi das so you all heard about it he was attached to his wife and as you remember the wife was gone to her parents house and he was missing her he decided to go also it was a stormy night the river was swollen no boats to be found he found a log and used that to go across actually it was not a log it was a dead body wife was on the second floor how to go there there was a rope he hung on that rope and went to his wife's room he said i have come to meet you i couldn't live without you wife said my dear husband how did you reach up here he said there was a log in the river and there was a rope outside the window and i climbed wife looked outside the window and saw the snake not a rope she said you used a dead body and a snake to come to me because you are so attached to me if you were this attached to god you would have become god realized so it's like a attachment towards the wife he just turned it so these words of the wife really pierced him and tulsi das he was hurt he left he became a great scholar he put all that energy all that attachment to become god realized same intensity he used and he wrote ramayan so he diverted his desire from wife to god and after hundreds of years we still read that ramayan and we cannot let it go people read and the tears flow their eyes so much bhakti in there and if we would have stayed attached to the wife we would have never known any tulsi das so he transformed generations and generations because of his diversion okay so this is what narad ji is telling us have all your emotions all your feelings all your actions direct towards god so we'll stop it here om purnamada 
पूर्णमिदम पूर्णात पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमदाय पूर्णमेव विशेष्य ओम शांति 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 ओ सो विल स्टार्ट विद वर्ड्स नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स नेक्स्ट टाइम Hey, good morning and namaste to all. Let's start our Tuesday class, Narad Bhakti Sutra, with the prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasme Shri Guru Ve Namaha, Om Bhu Bhava Swaha, Tat Savitra Vare Neyam, Bargo Devasya Dhimahi, Dio Yonaha, प्रचोदयात अस्तो मतगम्या तमसो ज्योतिर्गम्या मृत्योर्मा अमृत गम्या ओम सहना बवत सहना भुन स वीर करवा वहि तेजस्वी नवधीतमस्त मद्वेशा वहि ओम शांति 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 ओ So, Narad Bhakti Sutra, it has eighty-four uh, verses. So, we are on verse number sixty-one. That's where we ended our last Tuesday's class. So, verse sixty-one to sixty-six. This is a chapter six of the scripture, and section two of chapter one. and over here he is uh, telling us uh, how to practice this uh, supreme bhakti par bhakti and how to overcome the obstacles because no matter what we do especially when something great we are doing obstacles will come that's very natural so how to overcome them also so in 61 we learnt uh, that no worry or anxiety should be entertained at the worldly losses as it is the nature of a true devotee to constantly surrender his limited self and all its secular and sacred activities to to the lord of his heart okay so these little anxieties losses or even gains keep them at an arms length do your duty but do not entertain them in your mind because if our mind is our heart is full of god love for god then anything which is happening in the material world will not affect us okay so that's how he is telling us because the, this becomes an obstacle okay the worldly relationships worldly ups and downs they become obstacles okay So now let's look at verse number sixty-two today. Na tat siddhau, tat asiddhau, lok vevhara ha heya. Kintu fal tyaga ha tat sadhanam chakariyam ev. Na means not tat siddhau on attaining it, like a siddhi. Tat asiddho till it's not attained. लोक व्यवहार द वर्ल्डली एक्टिविटीज हया टू बी अबेंडन्ड किंतु मीन्स बट फल त्याग मीन्स रिनशिएशन ऑफ फ्रूट्स तत् साधनम डिलीजेंट परसूट ऑफ इट च मीन्स एंड कार्यम एव मस्ट बी डन सर्टेनली एव मीन्स सर्टेनली surely so till such a consummate love is not gained okay so this like a para bhakti he is talking about the love for god and god alone so till such a consummate love is not gained or an attaining the consummate love okay so siddhi and asiddhi worldly activities are not to be abandoned so this is the direction we are getting from a great rishi dev rishi narad 
but certainly we must diligently pursue love and learn to renounce our anxiety to enjoy the fruits of our activities so that means activities our duties should not be abandoned but finding pleasure in the outcome of our worldly duties or worldly actions that's what we need to abandon very clearly he is giving us uh, the same message which lord krishna gave in bhagavad gita he did not say arjun okay all right let's run away from this battle he convinced him that it's your duty as a warrior as a kshatriya to wage this war against the adharam but not for yourself whether you are a failure in it or whether you are successful in it this is the duty you need to do while keeping your mind and intellect in me that's what lord krishna said so this was a basic principle which lord krishna taught us do your duties so narachi understands that many difficulties can come to a devotee so he is giving us the right attitude which we must pursue in order to overcome further doubts and obstacles on our path so long as we are seekers the sadhaks that means so long as we are practicing to cultivate and develop love to the highest pitch the worldly activities lok vyavhar are they are part of our life our duties towards our home duties towards the society duties towards the nation should never be given up that's what he's telling us and again he says even when you reach the highest continue this dynamic life towards your duties and responsibilities you let go of the karta pan the doership that doesn't mean that you're not doing it and you let go of the bhokta pan the enjoyership but you are